Yes, our next speaker is Professor Hugo Lagerkrans. Hugo Lagerkrans. Welcome. Hugo. Um, Hugo Lagerkrans is professor of pediatrics at Karolinska Institute since 1989 and uh, have been director of Astrid Lindgren's Children's Hospital until 2000, 2004, am I right? Yes. Yes. Um, during uh, the last year, Dr. Lagerkrans' research has mainly focused on brain development of preterm infants. Uh, in 1989, there was a lecture in Stockholm where Jürgen Lagerkrans had invited Heide-Lisa Als to give a lecture about NIDCAP. And in that audience was Björn Westrup and two nurses from the Fowler Hospital. And that lecture became the starting shot for NIDCAP in Sweden. And then it expanded to Europe. So it was a very important lecture you gave that year, that day. Thank you, Jürgen. Thank you for the invitation. It's a real <coughs> nice to be back in Lund. Uh, I think we had uh, a lot of co collaboration with uh, Lund, and we looked upon Lund and uh, as the leading center in, in Sweden in uh, neonatology with Nils uh, uh, Svenningsen. And uh, in some way, he also started uh, with non-invasive uh, treatment of these uh, small uh, infants, and uh, uh, I think he paved the, <laughs> the road uh, for uh, need cap. <laughs> I, I nothing to declare, but I, uh, I'm a chief editor of uh, Acta Pediatrica, and uh, Today, actually, <laughs> there was in the radio uh, a long uh, uh, presentation of a study from uh, Lund and Gothenburg. Anne Hellström was interviewed, and it's about uh, the outcome of uh, the extremely preterm infants. So, when I started with neonatology, I actually, I, it was 1972, I was in the United States, and uh, I was actually in the Department of Pharmacology uh, and doing some basic science. But then I visited uh, Millie Stahlman in, and spent a week in Nashville, and, and that really fascinated me because I, I think, uh, as I, I started as a physiologist, I was so interested in the physiology of these uh, tiny babies. And, and this is the way it looked like uh, a lot of incubators and very few parents. I, I don't Maybe they were allowed to visit for short uh, visits. There were grand rounds, uh, a lot of noise. Uh, <coughs> it's said that some of the consultants, uh, they put their cigars on the incubator when they studied, the, the, then they wanted to investigate the baby. So it was um, not so good. <laughs> so uh, uh, as Corinne mentioned, uh, I uh, was uh, I, I arranged a, a lecture by Heilis Als. He was actually my mentor. Who was a brain uh, uh, professor of brain uh, research, uh, Kurt von Euler, and he had a good friend Frank Duffy, the husband of uh, Heilis. And he said, "You must in organize a seminar or lecture for Heilis Als." And she uh, did that in the main lecture hall, corresponding to this it, at Karolinska. And it was really a charismatic uh, lecture, because before that, uh, we looked upon the infant as a kind of organism uh, without consciousness uh, and own feelings. Uh, but she really explained that the preterm, also the preterm infant, is a person. Uh, he or she is one of us. Uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, as one of the few lectures I really uh, remember, and it really impressed me. And uh, as you uh, 
probably know um, Agneta Kleberg and Bjorn Westrup were there and they were so uh, enthusiastic so they decided to uh, go to uh, Boston uh, at Harvard she was uh, based at she's based at Harvard University in Boston and uh, uh, then uh, they spent I, I don't know remember maybe a few weeks they were not licensed at that time but anyway then they started a project in Falun and uh, uh, it was a small study <laughs> and then uh, I was in contact with them and said but the problem is that it's too small study and it's not randomized controlled study and I was actually I must admit I was a little skeptical but anyway uh, we uh, started a project in Stockholm we had two ho rooms one for uh, neat cab little darker room uh, and one for conventional care so they were really uh, randomized but this was uh, during the time 92 when uh, the Swedish economy was terrible and we wanted to involve Lund also but uh, it was in not a very good conditions uh, we had to save a lot of uh, money but uh, anyway she succeeded to, to uh, perform the study and, and it was uh, published in uh, pediatrics uh, uh, 2000 and we could confirm uh, Heidelis uh, uh, studies in Boston that uh, we, we saw that these uh, babies were discharged earlier from the, uh, the neonatal ward. Uh, they were uh, uh, in better condition. Their head circumference was a little bigger and also they had less respiratory problems. It were not dramatic effects, I must admit, but uh, significant. So uh, this leads me into uh, what I think I highly has done for me is that I, I now re look upon the baby as a uh, person as a, one of us and also uh, we have all this discussion and I've also been involved in this pain research. Uh, and, and the question is, uh, wh what is it like to be a preterm infant? What is it like to be a fetus or a newborn baby? And, and philosophers, they, they are very interested in this question, but they mainly discuss what it is like to be a bat. This is a very classical paper, and it lives in the dark, hangs upside down. And there are some similarities with the fetus. And I asked uh, Thomas Nagel, who was uh, the philosopher, and they don't, didn't seem to be very interested in the baby or the fetus. But the bat is more important. But uh, I, I think this is uh, very uh, uh, important. Uh, and also, w w when uh, uh, does the infant become aware of itself? In German, die Geburt des Ich. Uh, and... Um, uh, <coughs> I think this is a very interesting question. It also is relevant for our clinical practice, uh, tr trying to avoid uh, in too many invasive uh, operations and uh, procedures. So, uh, can the fetus be conscious? Can it feel pain? We know that it uh, feels smell and taste. We know that it hears. Uh, I don't think it's awake. Uh, it has some memory, it learns some language. Uh, and I think uh, this starts around the uh, uh, 22, 23 uh, weeks, gestational weeks. Before that, there are no connections between the sensory organs except uh, olfaction, uh, and uh, uh, thalamus, uh, uh, the connections from thalamus from the subplate to cortex. So it's impossible to feel or sense anything before 22, 23, 24 uh, weeks. But then uh, uh, you can see the connections are established. So, so I think this is an important uh, uh, milestone. And uh, also I think that this is the reason that the limit for legal abortion is, is somewhere here to 21 uh, weeks per uh, plus six days you have to have some kind of self safety margin <coughs> we uh, there are several studies they are fairly old now but uh, that the uh, fetus uh, reacts to uh, the maternal voice and song and 
uh, music. There's a famous Australian study. They played uh, sh uh, the mothers or the pregnant women were looking on the soap opera uh, neighbor, something like that. And there was a jingle played over and over again. And then uh, after birth, after they had delivered their babies, they, they played that uh, jingle for the babies. And they seemed to recognize that compared with jingles for other soap operas like Red Riet. Uh, I also think that the learning of language starts much earlier than we, we believe before. Together with uh, um, uh, Patricia Kuhl, we, we did a study in Stockholm and in Seattle, and uh, some of you have heard about this, but we, we could show that the uh, they were sucking on a pacifier, and we recorded the sucking. And we found that the Swedish infants, when they heard U, which is a very Swedish vocal, uh, they, they sucked uh, regularly, and, uh, um, but not, they seemed to be a little uninterested. But then they play E, e and that's a little more, not so common. So they become more excited. And in America, it was the other way around. Uh, e was, they had heard that lot, uh, several times, but U, that was a new sound for them. Then they sucked much more. A and uh, there's another famous study uh, from Germany. Uh, <coughs> maybe you have heard about it, but French newborns, they cry in a different way than German uh, newborns. The French babies, they cry, they go up, Paris, while the uh, German babies, they cry, Tys Tyskland. And I recently uh, read about a paper, which I think was very interesting. They looked on baby, Korean babies who had been adopted by Dutch families. They had never heard any Korean language uh, because they were adopted at very early stage. Uh, they had only heard Dutch, but then they played uh, uh, Korean language for them uh, uh, after a few months. And they seem to recognize that. Uh, so they must have learned it uh, in the womb. <coughs> but so there are some, uh, in some way, the fetus can be uh, <coughs> defined as a, a conscious. It's aware of itself to some extent. It can react to sensory stimulation. But it's mainly asleep, mainly in active sleep or REM sleep. And we know also that it's sedated by uh, various hormones like pregnanolone and uh, adenosine and prostaglandin. But then uh, at birth, there's an enormous stress of birth, enormous levels of uh, catecholamines. And uh, uh, I talked about that early, uh, earlier, but what's also interesting is that the baby wakes up if you have been at the delivery. They usually eyes are closed before uh, they come out, the head comes out. Uh, uh, and uh, this is due to uh, a special brain nucleus, uh, locus ceruleus, with a lot of norepinephrine or noradrenaline. And then the baby is awake for uh, an hour, a couple hours, and then they falls asleep and, and uh, animal ex in animal experiments we have shown that this is really an activation of the um, uh, locus ceruleus and you can also see it if you look on the pupils of the newborn baby uh, in spite of this light uh, they have very uh, big pupils <coughs> so uh, we, we can say that the uh, newborn full-term baby I'm talking now about, they are, uh, perceive their own baby, their, their own body, uh, they uh, root, orient head and mouth uh, more towards the finger of someone else than itself, so it has some feeling of itself and the mother or the father. <coughs> and they have also some proprioceptive sense. And I'm sure you have seen this uh, photo many times. It's one of, uh, it was uh, Andrew Melso. He published this in Science 1977, uh, showing that the newborn baby can uh, imitate. Uh, and, and this was a crucial paper, fam because at the same time they published a paper in Science about the uh, backside of the moon. Uh, and we can, uh, they said that we know as little uh, about the brain infant brain as we know about no, the backside of the moon and now we, we this was a start of an, a lot of studies on infant behavior and it's very easy to repeat as I have done. <coughs> so um, I, I then want to uh, 
uh, say a few words about uh, what, what does consciousness correspond to at a biophysical level, William uh, Diems. We talk about a stream of consciousness, and what about the baby? And together with um, uh, <coughs> Peter Fransson and Ulrika Oden, uh, we have looked uh, on uh, the uh, uh, with functional MR on the uh, conscious uh, on the resting state activity uh, of uh, newborn babies, uh, and uh, you can see there are several hubs. Uh, I'll show it a little more in the next slide. And uh, if you compare that with an adult, in the adult it's mainly the forebrain and the parietal lobe here. In the baby, it's not so much in the forebrain or uh, prefrontal cortex, or, uh, he, but a lot are in uh, the visual cortex, auditory cortex is not included here, and sensory cortex. Uh, and this uh, fits very well with our concept that uh, the newborn is go, uh, sensing what's going on now. Uh, but uh, an adult, he's or she is thinking of uh, what I go, I'm going to do next, and they're thinking of me memories, etc. Uh, here, and then they also make decisions or plans for the future here in prefrontal cortex. So uh, the uh, uh, baby has very high resting state activity in the brain, but it's uh, more adapted to the uh, 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 that uh, they is sensing the what's going on now. So, so what about the preterm infant? When does consciousness emerge in the preterm infant? <coughs> uh, and uh, we know that uh, um, um, uh, we, uh, uh, they react if you uh, disturb them or uh, with pain or something like that. And uh, Marco Batocci, in his thesis, he, he showed that, uh, uh, I think there were about 30 weeks, these babies, uh, w when uh, you do an injection or uh, uh, to a baby, it reacts just when you touch it. This is with near infrared spectroscopy. But then if you, uh, if you f uh, baby feels a st painful sti stimulus, nociceptive stimulus, you can see a, a huge increase of the uh, uh, activity here around uh, about the sensory cortex. So this indicates that uh, the baby is not only reacting on a, a, a spinal level. We know that they react uh, if we uh, pitch. Uh, uh, they react if we irritate them in the body. But we, we, they didn't think that it reached the cortex where the behavior is localized. And I think this indicates that uh, they may be aware of it. And actually, a similar study was done in London by, by Maria, Maria Fitzgerald. Uh, and and uh, so we can confirm, it uh, was confirmed, or we published them at the same time. <coughs> and uh, then, uh, as I said, the uh, fetus is learning language. Uh, and uh, France, um, Fabrice Valois in France, uh, he has uh, looked with Niels on how uh, preterm infants react to uh, various sounds. Uh, and voices, ma ma for paternal voices, ma maternal voice, uh, and found that uh, the brain uh, is activated in a very similar way as uh, an adult. So they, they seem to uh, process the language, although they can't speak. Uh, and uh, it, it, one thing uh, which is an important criteria of uh, consciousness is to feel, express joy or hedonic uh, feelings. And I think this is a difference between a uh, uh, robot or a uh, zombie. Uh, you can, they can do everything, but can they really feel uh, uh, joy or can they be happy or less or, so, or uh, uh, sad? Uh, so, uh, uh, of course, uh, we, uh, we have a lot of problems with this very preterm infants. And actually, on the ra Swedish radio today, uh, uh, there was an, uh, they presented a study which was published in Acta Pediatrica from Lund and Gothenburg uh, 
showing uh, the outcome of uh, neonatal, of the extremely preterm infants and, and results. Uh, we have a lot of things to do. Uh, and one thing which I want to point out, with, because I think it uh, uh, relates to consciousness, is the increased uh, risk of uh, uh, autism spectrum disorder, ASD. Uh, and we, find 15 to uh, we found about 25% of leak ODM. Uh, the British study they found was about 10%, but all studies show that there's uh, mo more studies. Uh, and uh, there was a study from uh, Pin, Dr. Roberta Pineda in St. Louis, and, and she showed that infants who are li uh, s uh, staying very isolated in the incubator uh, with very little contact. This is in St. Louis, and the mothers uh, f are from have socio-economic problems, so they are never there, and uh, 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 not so much staff. So, so the babies were very isolated from any human touch, uh, and these uh, infants actually developed more problems. They took longer time before they learned language. I'm not quite sure they developed really ASD, but some of the criteria of ASD. So uh, I think our next challenge is really to, uh, which we uh, start here, uh, we have done it for, for several years, but uh, now it's an uh, important milestone uh, here in Lund to really improve the, promote the development of the preterm infants. And what, what I think is uh, really challenging is uh, uh, epigenetics, and uh, that we can. Uh, and the earlier, the more, the more important is epigenetics. Uh, we talk about the other strand you can, by methylation or the methylation, uh, change uh, this strand uh, by the uh, uh, our treatment and behavior. I I, I, uh, I don't say nature or nurture, I say 100% nature and 100% nurture. That's it. Uh, the, here are my collaborators. Uh, I, uh, I discovered that I missed Bjorn here, but he's <coughs> he should also be involved here. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Hugo. First, you will have some flowers. What should I do with them? I should go to You can give them to me there, okay? Okay. Thank you. And a voucher. Any questions? No questions. So. Then we thank you so very much, Hugo, for giving this very interesting uh, lecture. It always... Ah, uh, Lena has... Okay. Thank, thank you, Hugo, for a fascinating lecture, as always, I would say. But I would like to ask about the resting states and the activity that matures from, from the central brain to the forehead, or frontal lobe. Is that a measure you can use to evaluate children by by checking them with MRI and resting states? Yeah, you can see the maturation of resting state, and it's little. Uh, I mean, uh, there's some argument whether they really has developed the uh, f uh, this n network. Uh, according to um, David Edwards in London, I think they have very early, but Peter Fransson thinks it takes a little time before you uh, really develop this resting state uh, activity. But, but you can see it with uh, functional arm, uh, MR and with uh, graph anal analysis, you can um, get an idea how well this babe, uh, be, uh, <coughs> how he has or she has developed the neuronal uh, network. Because uh, what it measures is how all the various nuclei in the brain or the, uh, are connected. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the problem is that uh, if you are very preterm or if there are some problems, you, you, you miss this connection. And, and this is very mm -hmm. uh, important for, for uh, the, the consciousness development. Can I ask another yeah, question? We have thank plenty of time, I think. Th thank you. Uh, I, I just also would, would it be. Do you think that 
you could predict children's outcome by doing a resting state MRI at birth in order to train them better and, and institute uh, yes, actually, early... Yes, actually, Deli Padilla, who she's based in, she's affiliated with Karolinska, but she's yeah. based in Barcelona. She has shown that, uh, not exactly resting state, but we, we have shown uh, we could see already at birth or at an early stage uh, that uh, there are ris is risk of a, a autistic spectrum disorder, and then they are tested when they are four years old. Uh, so we, we can now detect that. We have published that in mm -hmm. uh, cerebral uh, cortex. Mm -hmm. and, and I think uh, maybe if, uh, if we then uh, try to use uh, more intensive caring, uh, maybe we can prevent a little of this development, but it's difficult. Mm -hmm. Thank you.